I know you've talked about three real important achievements in the time that you've been in this office. Fiscal discipline, uh, the economy, and then, of course, disaster preparedness. Are we in better shape relative to those three things uh, than you were eight years ago? When absolutely. When I took over, the economy was going down, and that first year I had to restrict $753 million out of the budget. We've maintained that spotless AAA credit rating when 11 states have lost it. Uh, we've also made government more efficient and effective. Uh, 5,000 fewer employees, but a lot, of, a lot of technology now in government that didn't exist before. Uh, that's important. As far as the education side of that, uh, uh, the, of the troika you listened, I mean, we have 36% increase in college graduates. 44% increase in two-year graduates. It's a top 10 graduation rate. The bottom line is we've made substantive, strong uh, progress in all those areas. And disaster preparedness? I, I just felt we're, we're, we're stronger. I mean, we now have 193 tornado safe rooms built in Tornado Alley in schools and communities throughout south, southwest Missouri so that if that tornado does hit those towns, there will be a place for those kids, those school people, and, and those community members to go. We've rebuilt the levees in, in northern Missouri. Our faith-based initiative has been a model for the nation. I mean, uh, we took almost 180,000 volunteers, for example, in Joplin, many of those through that faith-based initiative that we developed by my executive. Order. So the bottom line is I think we're stronger, safer, and better um, for natural disasters than we were than when I got elected. What's your biggest disappointment? Um, you always have unfinished business. I mean, as far as economy, I, yeah, we've got the unemployment rate down, but they're still 4.5% unemployed, and so you have a number of people who are both under and unemployed. Um, I do think that transportation continues to be something out there that we're going to have to grapple with as a state. I mean, we've got to, people aren't giving away steel, they're not giving away concrete. Uh, these roads need to be fixed and expanded uh, in ways where there's traffic. I think that's a, a to-do list uh, thing that's, uh, that's, that's got to get done out there. I also continue to believe that uh, we need to continue these discussions about how we can have uh, a safe society, but when you have 31,000 people in prison and $700 million a year is spent on, on locking people up, continuing to look at ways in which we can get a better route to a turnaround in your life uh, after you've paid your penalty is an important discussion to continue. To a certain extent, you have been the little Dutch boy with your finger in the dike. I mean, you have had an opposition party-led legislature they have force-fed you a certain amount of legislation. You have vetoed it. Some of it has been overridden, uh, but have found the votes you needed uh, to sustain a lot of it. Do you see it all going away in a short order no, with no, this think, governor think, and this legislature. I think on the right to work thing, they're loaded for bear to get that done as quickly as they can. And I, I, I just disagree. I, I think that lowering wage rates in Missourians is taking away the ability for people to collectively bargain. Um, uh, unempowers the middle class and, and doesn't lead to job creation, but uh, that's what they ran on and I'm assuming that they will relatively quickly take away those uh, collective bargaining rights for, for individuals. What do you tell the next guy about this job? I mean, three things. I mean, uh, one is to watch the dollars. I mean, the legislature doesn't balance budgets. They like to talk like they do, but they, I've had to restrict $2.3 billion, so they've missed it by $300 million a year. Nobody comes to Jeff City to lobby for a cut. Uh, and consequently, the budget that gets to you is, is oftentimes more than, than, than what you can afford. So, there's, so keeping the fiscal uh, things in, in order is important. And that works on both ends, not just on the spending, but on the tax cut. And I think these folks are very likely to continue to pass special interest tax breaks under the guise of job creation. And I don't think special interest tax breaks create jobs, and I've got a lot of proof to that. So fiscal is important. Number two is <clears throat> uh, understand your state. Learn quickly. Uh, how diverse and difficult some portions of this state are to understand um, and, and try to embody the best of our state and continue to make those investments in public education and support public education. Don't look for short, quick fixes like taking public money and giving it to private schools. Look for ways we can continue to get more production out of our education system, which we're doing now. And the third thing is be yourself. I mean, uh, th uh, this is a job in which the people get to know you really, really well. Um, and they, uh, um, the, the people that I think that are successful at it, um, you know, I've noticed late in my career here, a lot more people call me Jay again rather than governor just because I think they know me. So I think you've got to be who you are out there uh, in the state. And don't get stuck in your office every day. Uh, you've got to get out. It's a very di difficult and diverse state. And if they don't see you and don't have a chance to talk to you, you can't really govern. So I'd get out of this uh, uh, capital complex. Spend time here appropriately, obviously, but you've got to get in all corners of the show me state. When we talked a year ago, 
there was the potential for a Democrat being elected to the White House and possibly an offer of some service in that administration to Jay Nixon of Missouri. That certainly is gone. You're going back to private life. What kind of law do you practice now? Um, well, I'm going with a great firm. It's got two former U.S. attorneys, one Democrat, one Republican, uh, two former United States Supreme Court clerks. I, as folks know, I argued the Supreme Court myself a number of times. Um, and then Jack Danforth with that firm and me. So, I, I, And then you've got about 20 or 22 of the, of the most capable lawyers uh, that I'm aware of anywhere in the country. So I'd say it's a growing firm focused on a lot of things that I'm interested in. I see it as a platform to move forward to represent. Uh, I, I told somebody else, I want to bring the same intensity to representing fewer people that I brought to representing 6.2 million. I look forward to uh, uh, re-entering the private practice. I think I understand uh, the risk of litigation and, and, and the risks of, uh, uh, of uh, legal things have given the vision I've had both as an attorney general and as a governor, and I look forward to providing that to, uh, to clients.